Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against the works of the devil. Over Madeline right now, I break the power of the devil over her in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, she's healed. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break all spirits that are trying to kill, steal, or destroy around her. In the name of Jesus, I break those powers. I command them to cease in their operation maneuvers. I break the power of infirmity over her right now. In the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, I declare her healed. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, she is healed. Mabel, walk the floor and, and quote scripture over Madeline. Father, I thank you for your healing power going out into the atmosphere, into, uh, through the atmosphere and healing Madeline right now. It's the children's bread. It's the children's bread. Lord, I thank you. You said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I thank you for the healing anointing coming up on Madeline and destroying all yokes of bondage. I worship you, Jesus, as Madeline's healer. I call Madeline healed in the name of Jesus. By Jesus' stripes, Madeline was healed. Lord, you sent your word and you healed them. I'm sending your word to Madeline in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Madeline is healed. Oh, Lord, I thank you for healing Madeline. Oh, thank you for being merciful to Madeline and being merciful to her family and healing her, healing her mind, her body, her restoring her soul. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I call strength into her body. I speak to her body right now, and I command her body to line up up with the word of God with by Jesus' stripes Madeline you were healed your body and your mind and your soul is healed by the name of Jesus the name above all names the name above all names sickness and disease and weakness and infirmity you have to go from Madeline in the name of Jesus you have to bow your knees to the name of Jesus oh we call life into her body into every organ of her body Lord we call life. We thank you that she has a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. We thank you that her body is strong, Lord. Her body is strong in the name of Jesus. Where there's weakness, strength is coming. Strength is there now. Strength is coming and strength is there in the name of Jesus. The one that heals us. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Thank you, Lord. We quote your word and we hold it up to you. This is your word, Lord. Your word and your word won't come back void. And I thank you, Lord, for healing Madeline in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Melissa, in the name of Jesus, I come against the works of the devil over Johnny right now. I break the power of the devil over him. All spirits of infirmity, depression, whatever it is that's attacking him, his blood, his sugar, whatever, I command it to be gone in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I speak to his body right now. And by the stripes of Jesus, I declare him healed. In the name of Jesus, I glorify you and I praise you right now. I thank you and I send the angels to bring about total deliverance for both of these individuals. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Now, speak over John. I thank you, Lord, that Johnny will live and not die. I thank you that he will fulfill his days on this earth with a clear mind. I speak to his mind. I command it to be clear and whole in the name of Jesus. I command his body to line up with the word of God. I thank you, Lord, that his body will live and it will live according to your word, which is perfect. I command his sugar to be normal. I rebuke diabetes over his body right now in the name of Jesus. Body, work as you're supposed to in the name of Jesus Christ. I command it. I thank you, Lord that his body will be perfect. I thank you, Lord, that he will have a visitation from you, Lord, that he will have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. I thank you that he will know you before he leaves this earth as his Savior. I call him into the kingdom of God right now in the name of Jesus. Satan, I command you to loose him right now. I thank you, Lord, that he is deceived. He thinks he knows you, but he doesn't know you. And I thank you that you're going to show up. And I, send, I ask you, 
to send a laborer, whether it be mom or someone else in that family, I ask you to send a laborer right now in the name of Jesus to that man. I thank you that even if it has to be an angel, it will be an angel, but he will know you as his Savior. I thank you that life and strength is going into his body right now in the name of Jesus. I loose the healing powers to start flowing right now in the name of Jesus. When mom shows up today there, she will see a difference in his mind and body. We claim it by the stripes of Jesus. He is healed. Hallelujah. Come up here, Sherry. Father, in the name of Jesus. Come here, Sherry. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing every member of Sherry's family right now. I break the power of the devil over her and her family. I bind the death angel. I come against the works of the devil. I bind up every spirit that's not of the Holy Spirit. And I declare each member right now of that family saved and healed in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, they are healed. Mabel, come here. Take her. Walk her. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for household salvation. I thank you for household salvation. Lord, you said to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy whole household. Lord, I thank you for this. I thank you, Lord, you said it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to salvation. I thank you, Lord, for this word. And we call it forth for Sherry's family. Lord, we call forth healing for Sherry's family. We send the word. The Lord sent his word. Well, we're sending the word. We're Jesus' is representing. And we're sending the word to her family today. All that are sick and afflicted, we bind up the devils that's coming against them. We break down any strongholds that the devil has over this family. Satan, I bind you and I break your power over that whole family. Spirits of infirmity, you go from them in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord. You need to go to Sherry's family and you need to heal them. You need to heal them. We're crying out to you like Brian Bartimaeus. You go to Sherry's family. Sherry's family, you go to their houses, wherever they are, and you bring the healing anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. And we bind and we rebuke all demonic forces over any member of that family. Satan, you have no power over them because whether they know it or not, they're saved. They're under the blood. And so you have no power over them. And we drive back all forces of darkness. We drive back all forces of the enemy, the enemy that would come against them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we worship you as Sherry's family's healer. We worship you as our healer. We worship you as Sherry's family's healer. We worship you. We send the word to them. By Jesus' stripes, you are healed. Where there's sickness and in uh, weakness in, in their bodies we command strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we command strength in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ there is power in our words and our word is going forth sending the word of God to her family by Jesus' stripes they are healed Lord we speak to the word we speak to their legs they are healed they are strong in Jesus name we rebuke all gangrene or anything that's afflicting his legs. I come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. All sickness and all disease has to bow to the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for healing Sherry's family. Thank you, Lord, that you're merciful and you're good. Lord, thank you. You are the Lord that heals. You are even Jesus, you healed people in the Bible before they were saved. You healed them before they were saved. And we thank you for that. Thank you for healing. Thank you for your miracle working power. Thank you, Lord. Everything that the enemy has stolen away, we call back restoration. Restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen from this family, we call restoration. Restoration. Woo! Oh, restoration, come forth. Restoration, come forth in Sherry's family. Restoration, come forth in Sherry's family. Oh, restoration of finances too. Restoration of finances in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Demons have to flee. Demons have to flee at the name of Jesus. The name above all names. Oh, we invoke that precious name, Jesus. That precious name, Jesus. Oh, they're going to see, Lord. They're going to see your goodness. They're going to see your mercy. They're going to see your healing power. 
They're going to see your loving kindness. They're going to see your faithfulness. They're going to see your long suffering toward them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we agree. Hallelujah. 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 Come up here, Sheena. Come up here. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil over Sheena and her family. I thank you that they're at peace and at rest right now in the name of Jesus. I glorify you right now for what you're doing in her. In the name of Jesus, I loose the angels to go out and to clear her path and, and to get her right where you want her to be in the name of Jesus. She's at rest and she's at peace right now. In the name of Jesus, I glorify you, Walker. In the name of Jesus, God, speak over in the name thank of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. You. Have she not will because fulfill you your not. perfect will on this earth. I thank you for the fire that burns in her. She will complete the work. I thank you for the signs, wonders, and miracles that follow her. I thank you that her children will be raised up in the word. They will have a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. I thank you that they are protected. I call them protected by the Holy Ghost and the angels right now. I call Sheena protected by the angels and the Holy Spirit right now. I thank you that every negative word I command it to be cursed and die at the root. Every word that's been spoken over them, I curse those words in the name of Jesus. I give them no life. They will be followers of Christ. They will do your perfect will. I thank you for healing their broken hearts. Their hearts will be healed. Their emotions will be healed. They will walk with the fire of God on this earth and fulfill your will, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you have the perfect way for them. They're going down that perfect path, Lord, to you. They're going down the path. They won't be. They won't stumble. They won't fall. They'll make it. I thank you, Lord, for it clearing out. I thank you for every devil that's trying to stop her to be shut up right now in the name of Jesus. I bind those devils trying to stop her right now in the name of Jesus, and I command them to go from her. I plead the blood of Jesus over her and the kids right now, her home. We call her house sold. We call Call it sold in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the angels going out and getting the buyer right now that you've already had. That that house is going to sell right now. You have the perfect home for her and she'll go to it. Whatever that perfect home is, you direct her and lead her and guide her footsteps. You said the righteous man's footsteps are ordered by you. And I call her footsteps ordered in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory, credit, and honor, praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I raise Shauna up, her mom and her dad right now. I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. I speak to cancer in her mom. I curse it. I command it to die and leave her body. Father, I thank you for restoring back everything that has been stolen from her. I praise you for the work that you're doing in her, in her dad, and I thank you that they found the bleeds. I thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, he is healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare it and I decree it over both of them, that both of them are healed by, by Jesus' name. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, I declare health into their bodies, life into their bodies. They'll live and not die, and they'll declare the works of the Lord. And I thank you for working everything out for Shauna to get over here and get back and take care of them. I praise you for what you've done in her life and in her family's life. In the name of Jesus, may able to speak the word over them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Jesus, for Jesus. healing for Shauna. Thank you, Lord, for your will being done in her life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we call you her healer. We call you our, her miracle worker. Lord, we send your word. By Jesus' stripes, she was healed. Lord, I thank you for working everything out for her. I thank you, Lord, you're a God of mercy, and you're a God of grace, and you're a God of goodness, and you're, you're our healing God. In the name of Jesus, we speak it over this lady. In the name of Jesus, Shauna, we send the word to you. By Jesus' stripes, you were healed. You were healed. Every need, every financial need, every need, Every need, every need is met in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we plead the healing blood of Jesus over her. We plead the healing blood of Jesus over her. Lord, we plead the healing blood of Jesus over her. Jesus, thank you for going to her house and bringing total, total, total healing. Total, total, total deliverance. Thank you, Lord, for restoring everything 
to that family that has been stolen away. Lord, we call her blessed. We call restoration in the name of Jesus into her body, into her life, into her finances, into her home, into her family. Devil, you're a liar and you're a thief, and you've got to give it up. You've got to give back to her. You've got to release what you've stolen away from her through this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, go. David, David, come up here. Here it comes. Hold on just a second. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to stand in. That little lady I told you about, Connie Ricketts, she okay. passed away this morning. Oh, okay. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. I praise you that you came to heal the brokenhearted. I thank you for healing the family's broken heart. Be with them in this time of loss in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. I praise you right now in the name of Jesus. I praise you right now in the name of Jesus for meeting every need, being with that family, Lord. Being at rest in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come up here, David. Hallelujah. Come here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. You have not because you ask not. Now, there's people that uh, may life at watching this, but if you could feel the anointing that I'm feeling in this place right now, you wouldn't be laughing because Jesus is real. Jesus is real. And he came, came to heal people. He came to set them free. He came to save them. Go ahead and walk him. Hallelujah. David's probably shy about doing this. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> you know, the enemy can come not just to attack our body, but sometimes he comes and attacks our jobs, our finances, puts people in our path just to, just to try to steal and kill from them. But you know what? <clears throat> Brother Norville, whenever he was... Uh, I don't know how long he'd been following the Lord, but he, the Lord supernaturally caused him to meet Brother Hagen, and Brother Hagen prophesied to him and said, "Your finances are going to be attacked, but if you'll keep ooh, if you'll keep praying and praying and praying, you will come through this, and your finances will be better than before." Than before, and he said, "I just kept, kept walking the floor, kept doing what I knew to do," and he would. Another thing I learned from Brother Norval, he, he would worship Jesus as the best business partner in, in the whole world. And you know what? David won't mind me. He's been attacked. He's been attacked unjustly in his job. And we're going to call that into account today, and we're going to put the devil under, under his feet where he belongs in the name of Jesus. And we're going to call Jesus his best business partner and the best... Favor with, favor with his bosses and whatever. He's being unjustly taught and all that, so we're going to call it done. And remember, Deuteronomy says that we serve the God that gives you the ability to make wealth. Father, I thank you that you love David. I thank you that you are David's provider. I thank you, Lord, you're the best business partner in the whole world. I thank you, Lord, that you are David's wisdom. I thank you, Lord, I worship you as David's Prince of Peace as he walks through this. I worship you, Jesus, as his Prince of Peace. Oh, Jesus, when things like this happen, Lord, we know sometimes it's hard. It's hard on us. But, Father, I thank you that you deliver us and that David will walk through this with peace and victory. Jesus has overcome the world. Jesus has overcome those demonic forces that's using this person to try to persecute David and try to bring harm in his job. Satan, I call you into account today. I call you. You have no power over David, so therefore you have no power over his job in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan, I break your powers. I stop your powers that's coming against David through this this wicked woman, this wicked leader, I break the powers that's using her to destroy that school that's causing all those other teachers.
cancer's problems too. I break that power right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I loose the angels to go to that school and do whatever needs to be done. I call that woman to repentance. And if she, if she won't repent, Lord, I pray that the judgment that she's bringing on people will come back on her own self in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord. You are David's provider. You are the best businessman in the whole world. Jesus, I worship you with David as his provider. I worship you as his business, to, business partner. Lord, you're blessing him. You're blessing him. You are his wisdom, and you are showing him what to do in this situation as he walks it out day by day. And Lord, you said, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We confess this over that situation. No weapon formed against David. David shall prosper. It's just going to fall to the ground. It's just going to fall to the ground. It's just going to fall to the ground. This, this plan that the enemy had, Satan, I loose you from your assignment over this job and over this man in the name of Jesus. You have no power. So I loose you all demons from their assignment over him. And I worship you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for the authority of the word. Thank you for the authority of the word. And your word says we're blessed going in, we're blessed coming out, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the country. And we have favor with God and man. Thank you for giving David favor with those that he needs favor with. Thank you, Lord, that you provide favor for us. Thank you, Lord, you protect us in our jobs. Thank you, Lord, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against us we shall condemn, for it is our heritage because of the blood of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus over this situation. And we pray, Lord, that David will come out of this better than he's ever been before. Better than he's ever been before. And that it will be a testimony. And that he'll just walk this out with peace and joy and confidence. And people will know, will know there's something different about David. And he'll be a testimony. Now, David, you just laugh at the devil. Let's just laugh at the devil. Ha, 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 devil, you've lost. Help me laugh at the devil. Ha, 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 ha. You are lost. You are a defeated foe. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Devil, you are a liar, and you're the father of lies, and we got your number. We got your number in the name of Jesus, and he will be blessed in his job, and he will even come out better than he's ever been before in this job because, Jesus, we worship you as the best business partner in the whole wide world. Amen. amen and amen. Lord, I thank you right now. Hallelujah. You said to decree what we want, and I thank you in the name of Jesus. I praise you for what your, your, your Holy Spirit is doing here and what he's doing in the future. I thank you that the finances, the workers, everything, the, the repairmen, everything we need, Father, I speak it into existence. Every physical need as a ministry and as a body of Christ, I thank you, Father, that it's coming forth right now. Everything we need, I thank you that spiritually, I thank you that the gifts operate in this place and, and your servants. I thank that your presence is here like no other uh, uh, place. I thank you that your revelation is falling on us. I give you honor and glory, and we stand at it, Father. We declare, we declare it over us right now and i praise you father that we touch the needs of everybody that comes in here that we meet those needs lord i give you honor and praise i thank you for healing everyone that we've named and being with the johnson family right now by the stripes of jesus i thank you i thank you right now father in the name of jesus and i come against every spirit every spirit that is coming against the, the people of this church I break your power. You'll not skip to kill, steal, or destroy any longer. I command you to cease in your operations and maneuvers, and I loose the angels to bring this about right now. It stops right now in the name of Jesus. I praise you and I glorify you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If we're, if we're living in the decade of speaking, then we need to speak. 
You say, well, Brother Keith, does this work? I'm still here. Mabel said, I need to clarify something. Y'all notice I limped. That has nothing to do with what I was healed. I'm dealing with something else now. See, devil's equal opportunity. He's going to attack everybody. He's going to fight. The issues of life are going to continue as long as you're standing on this earth and breathing. You have to be able to deal with them. How do you deal with them? Most of the time, you can just say, get behind me, Satan. Quote a scripture and go on. But if that don't work, you better get up and you better walk the floor. You better start declaring what, what you believe and who you believe in, and you better mean it. And, and you say, well, Brother Keith, I believe Jesus for this, or I believe Jesus for that, and I didn't get it. Now, here's, here's listen to me. I, I don't want to have to interpret this. Grow up and figure out what's wrong with you. Because there's nothing wrong with God. Well, I wanted this, I want that. I, I got a wife because of the Word of God. I got a home because of the Word of God. I've got healthy children because of the Word of God. I got healthy grandchildren because of the Word of God. And I've got, I, I have been successful because of the Word of God. But now I want you to all understand something. I had to make some changes along the way. God didn't. I did. So if it's not working, you need to figure out why it's not working. And I can give you a hint, a big hint. You may not have the kind of relationship with Jesus that you need. That's where most people come up short. But those that do have a relationship, maybe there's something else there that the Lord's been telling you to do or not to do, and you, you've not quite done it yet. That could hinder, you, hinder them, God doing things for you. But we are, a, we are a church that was trained by a great man of God to declare and decree and, and, and this is the way you do it. Most churches won't teach this. Most churches won't make their people do this. You see. And here's what you need to understand. I'm, I'm using Melissa and Mabel because, because I know they're trained. I'm getting ready to start using y'all. So you better get you some scriptures in. You better be ready. If you don't have them, go to my website and on the... Uh, document page I've got healing and, and battling scriptures listed because you got to know how to walk a person you got to know how to confess the word of God not because not just for that person but for your own need your own need if the devil starts attacking your family and and and, and this isn't said enough in the churches and you you start losing family members what you need to do is bind the death angel. There is a death angel. And he will operate if he's not bound. Somebody need to hear that. I suspect more than one. Uh, Toby, will you get my podium here? Let me, uh, let me make a couple of announcements and I'm going to do just a little teaching and... Uh, I keep the Johnson family in your prayers. Uh, uh, they're on their way to Chattanooga and Amlet's right now with uh, Madeline. She's been having some issues, and uh, we need to keep uh, praying for them and all the people, all the people that uh, have asked us to pray. We, we've got a prayer book downstairs, and, and uh, it's amazing how many calls a week now we're getting for prayer. And the Lord's answering a lot of them. Shauna, the, you know, one of the prayers we did here over the mother and dad uh, she couldn't get a flight out of, of uh, uh, Germany and uh, she didn't even mention anything to me about changing flights and I, and I, I told Melissa I said well I'm going to pray that uh, they, they get her a different flight and, and within two or three hours they were able to get her a, a flight out because she needed to get home to her mom and dad and uh, the Lord came through. So we, we're, and that's just, a, that, that's not a minor answer to prayer because that was something that she really needed. But compared to uh, cancer and other things, I guess you could say it's somewhat minor. But here's the thing about it God will give you the desires of your heart. To Him, it doesn't mean, mean, mean anything if it's small or big, you know, but you still got to pray and you still got to ask the Lord for it. You have not because you ask not. I want, to, I want to say this before I get off of prayer. 
don't forget what you pray. Because the Lord spoke to me years and years ago, decades ago. He, he, he told me basically he was saddened because so many people will pray and they'll forget what they prayed. And he said, I answer prayer. But he said, he said they just forget about it. Don't pay attention. And then they don't give him glory for what took place. That's, that's the bad, the worst of the thing. So uh, always remember what, you, what you're praying. Uh, the announcements, the main announcement I want to make is uh, Friday will be the Rugrat Worship Service. And uh, if you have noticed, they have, uh, and I praise the Lord for this, this is an answer to prayer. They have started tiring the sidewalks out. I don't think they're going to do any more on this side but probably as soon as they pour that uh, uh, sidewalk on this side, uh, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, they will tire the whole sidewalk out in front of the school. They're, they're totally redoing it. So on Friday night, if that sidewalk is tore out, the Rugrat service will be over here in the sanctuary. In fact, let's just say it's going to be in the sanctuary. Uh, uh, so put the word out, and I will, I will try to post something on Facebook. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be able to run the buses or not, but it, it, we'll let you know by Wednesday, uh, depending on what's happening with the Johnsons. But we're still going to have the Rugrat worship service. And uh, uh, if you want to come in, uh, you'll have fun. See, that got started because the kids said, well, the adults have seminars, why can't we? So we're, we've got to have their seminar. And, and we will have another one in about two months. We're do, doing them every other month. So, uh, and Vacation Bible School, uh, uh, so far, Emily, uh, I've talked to a couple of them, will probably be the last full week of May. I'm having to change that uh, from our staff meeting. I know that Monday is Memorial Day, but I figure most people will be home after that. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, then on Saturday, we will have a play day with uh, water. They, the kids want to have uh, water balloon fights, and we'll have a water slide and stuff here. So uh, look at your calendar, and I'm not going to set it in stone until I, I make sure every, it's good with everybody, but the last full week of May will be vacation Bible school, unless we change that. So we, we've got demonology. I'm looking really forward to that. Uh, Kim and I have talked two or three times this weekend. John's, John was going to bring some of his musicians with him. Now he's planning on bringing a lot of his musicians with him. So uh, demonology is building up. Talked to Dwayne this morning. He will be here in March on, and teaching on In Christ. And then Bill Dennington, I'll probably talk to him after service today. Uh, and uh, he's coming in with authority of the believer. And then this fall, uh, we've got several more things in the works. You, you might be amazed at what I'm planning. I don't plan small, guys. I do try to uh, uh, separate it by at least two months so that I don't wire all of y'all out. But uh, we've got to get back to the business of spreading the gospel. So at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. So... Uh, and man, we had fun. The kids had fun. They, all the adults that was our had fun. So uh, come on in. Uh, Y'all can sit in the back and uh, uh, be a part of it. Uh, do we want to let all the kids go now? Make your checks out to NLBC, New Life Bible Church, if you're online. Uh, they may be posting something. If not, you can go to normalhaze.org, and we've got a couple of ways to give. Our website, we do have control of the, uh, the, of the bookstore now. Uh, there's still an issue on the main website saying unsecure, but the bookstore is secure. And we, uh, as the Lord told me, we are uh, selling a lot, uh, not a lot, but quite a bit of digital products. And we're doing this for all of you that are overseas. You'll be able to download most of Brother Norval's teachings straight in to your computer. That way you don't have to pay shipping, and uh, it's actually cheaper to uh, buy it that way. But we're going to be adding a lot more stuff in the near future to it. Our newsletter went out. I uh, hope if you didn't get that, uh, let uh, Melva uh, either you can get it by email or snail mail. And I'd rather y'all get it by email just because y'all can pick a copy up here in the sanctuary. It's in the back if you want a copy of that, and we're going to be coming out every quarter with that. 
So uh, we're picking up, things are happening, we're getting ready to get a bid on a part of the roof, and I, we'll have to raise the finances to get that fixed. But here's the main thing, uh, guys go ahead and start taking the offering up and I'll make this announcement. We have a couple of pieces of property that we are trying to sell, we're going to sell, be praying that that happens quickly because that will give us the finances to restore everything back the way it needs to be. And also, uh, and you may not understand this, be praying for special finances for this ministry. Lord knows what, what I mean by it. But uh, be praying that that property sells because that will change things very quickly. Uh, we'll be able to get to all the buildings where they need to be. And, and I'll be honest with you, we're making headway uh, even without that, but I would like to get it done because we've got a lot of meetings we need to do and, and there's people aligning with us and uh, I'm even getting some people talking to me about uh, doing a demonology up in Michigan with Brother, Brother Kimmons. If that, go, if that happens, we need to be able to send our team up there and, and different things. So, um, and uh, hopefully, we, we, uh, Brother Kevin has asked us about uh, being the sponsor of the Tennessee State Evangelistic Team for Tent Nations. So we'll need the finances to do that. So there's a lot of things that the Lord is opening the door up for us to do, and, and, and we're, gonna, we're really going to need to get everything in order and get, get moving towards it. Go ahead and bring the offering up, guys. Hallelujah. Uh, we have, we've, I know of one healing we've got from uh, our seminar, so I, I praise the Lord for all the lives that have been touched. Father, in the name of Jesus, I call these finances blessed. I call every family under the sound of my voice blessed. Lord, I, I, I rebuke the devourer over them. You're the God that gives them the ability to make wealth. They will prosper. They will be in health. Uh, Father, they'll never lack. Their whole families will follow you. I honor you and I praise you. We're good stewards of the finances, and I thank you that all the properties are going to sell, all the repair work's going to be done, and all the uh, ministry that you've called us to do is going forth, and we're touching the world one more time. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, if you've got your Bibles uh, today, go ahead and... Uh, Look up 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and I will give you where I'm going first. I, I started a few weeks ago on uh, the gifts of the Spirit, and uh, I got halfway through prophecy. Now, I'm not going to go back and review that. If you, if you didn't get it, if you'll go online uh, on YouTube or Facebook, you can find it. And I think it's number eight. So, uh, I praise the Lord. Let me... Uh, Get where I need to be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But we went through a lot of good information on the, on the teachings, on um, prophecy. Today, what I want to go, go to is how to judge the gift of prophecy. Just because someone gets up in front of you and gives a prophecy, that doesn't mean it's from the Lord. There's counterfeits to everything, angels of light. <coughs> so let's look for a few minutes, and, and uh, this is going to uh, uh, go pretty quick, I think. And, uh, but the first thing we do when we judge prophecy, we judge it by the Scripture. Like I said the other day, when Jesus walks in here, he's not going to be talking about NCIS and the boutique up the street. He's, he, he's going to be about the Word. Prophecies are about the Word. Okay? Uh, the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Christ. All prophecy will point you right back to Jesus. If you're operating in the gift of prophecy, it's going to point right back to Jesus. If it don't point to Jesus... It's not the gift of prophecy. Okay, let's look at, let's, let's look at Isaiah 8, 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now that pretty well settles that. So let's go to number two. And this one I call the Hagen rule. Uh, 
It changed my life when I picked this one up. All these people out here teaching, I can use, I can use this one rule, and I will know if you are teaching, preaching, prophesying, whatever you're doing, I'll know if you're doing it by the Word of God or whether you're an angel of light. And that is, let everything be established by two or three witnesses. Just because you read one scripture in the Bible does not mean that is a doctrine. There must be two scriptures. And the more scriptures you get, the stronger that doctrine is. I can name at least 43 healing scriptures that I've got, I think, listed on my list. I don't know how many they are in the Bible. I, I know that there's over 1,900 prosperity scriptures. In fact, it's the strongest doctrine in the Bible. So when you get into that and you start hearing people give uh, words and stuff, if it is not based on the Scripture, and if there's not two or three witnesses to this, don't receive it. Now, what do I mean by witnesses when it comes to the gift of prophecy? All right. That, and that is 2 Corinthians 13, 1. To accept a word of prophecy, you should hear that prophecy by more than one person operating in that gift, or the Spirit should have already spoke it to you. If you're, if you're a person that is led by the Holy Spirit, and you're, and you're studying the Word, and you're communing with God, there should be no surprises to you whatsoever when the Lord speaks to you. Whether it's through the gift of prophecy or any other way. This all should be coming into your inner man and you should know it. In order, your spirit, inner man, will bear witness with a prophecy and just a drop of a hat. Uh, Dale comes up here and he's gave, given two or three prophecies uh, of late. And, and, and the moment he starts speaking, I know he's hearing from the throne. Because the Lord's done showing me that about the church. He's confirming through, the, through prophecy everything that, that the Spirit is telling us here. You know, we, you, just like I gave the church a, a, a word right before we opened the service up. And, and that word, I'm not going to uh, go back and repeat it, but that word uh, didn't shock me whatsoever because I've been waiting since 1980 for that. I mean, you know, and I, people are talking about it all over the place now, and it has to do with the outpouring. Uh, so you should, you should always have two witnesses to whatever said. Either the Holy Spirit is confirming it in your inner man, or someone else will give you a, a prophecy about it. A lot of times it may be exactly the same prophecy. It must, the third thing you need to, to look at when a prophecy is given, it must be proven or proved. Prophecy comes uh, uh, while you're in high worship. What do I mean by proved? Uh, if, you're, if, you're just, if you're sitting there working on a car and, you, and, and, and nothing's going on uh, and you get a word, is it proved? It would be if, if, if the presence of God moved in and confirmed it. You see, that's what I mean by proof. If you were, in, if you were walking down a, a street and you were worshiping and you were in the Spirit and the Word of God came to you, you see it's being proved out because you're in the supernatural realm. You're proving out. I mean, somebody just jumps up in the middle of a bar fight and says, Thus saith the Lord, and there's no spirit, no move, no nothing. That's not proved. You see, now to you that operate in these gifts, that, that means quite a bit. I, I realize people that don't know anything about the gifts of the Spirit being proved might not make a lot of sense to them. But the moment, the moment you begin to operate in one of these gifts, a quietness will come. The power of God will come up in you. The presence of God may move into the room, but, but, but it will prove out to you. You know, I, I, when I started moving into gifts, my foot, I do. If I didn't, if I didn't give it, you didn't want to be around me. Mabel, you quit, quit, quit. You say, uh, the Lord, Lord will prove out to you. Now, let me see what I've wrote down. A lot of times I get these ready, sometimes months ahead of time. Let me give you First Samuel ten, uh, five and six. After that thou shalt come to the hill of God, 
where is the gar- where the gar- is the garrison of the Philistines? And it shall come to pass when thou art come hither to the city that thou shall meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with psalteries and, and tabrets and, and pipes and a harp before them, and they shall prophesy. Okay, so you see, we're seeing a, a, a spirit of music and worship coming in before, before him. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Now, if I were teaching on uh, uh, the office of a prophet, that being turned into another man is, is a very important uh, statement because that is the personality, talking about the personality of a prophet. When you prophesy <laughs> in the gifts, that personality won't come on you. That, that is for the ministry gift of the prophet, okay? But what is being said there is because these prophets, and you will find that all, all prophets uh, value the psalmist and music because you will find that music will set the stage to prove out prophecy and the move of God. And that's what was being said there. The moment he came into the presence of those prophets and they, they set what Brother Norval calls as the atmosphere, the gift began to flow, you see. So you can, you'll recognize and, and be able to judge uh, a person but by the state of what is going on around them as they operate in that gift. Prophecy as all the gifts operate off the, the love of God. 1 Corinthians 13, 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have no charity, not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could mo- remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. In verse 3, and though I bestow all my good goods to the poor and through the and though I give to my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. Ever the, the gifts of the Spirit are motivated by the love of God. Now sometimes in the prophetic office, it's hard to, hard to understand the love of God. <clears throat> well, they will walk up and tell you, you sorry scuzzball, you need to straighten up or you're going to burn in hell. Well, that's not the love of God. Well, how do you think that guy got there? See, that guy, that, that prophet is less like everybody else. He don't really want to deal with that many people. You'll find out prophets are not people persons. So you're actually seeing the true love of God in those prophets because they're doing something totally not normal to them. Okay, Melissa and them bear witness, hey, you know, dad's, dad's a lot different when he's a pastor than when he's a prophet. Trust me, uh, you, you can tell a big difference in that office. But you see, it's all got to be motivated by love. All the ministry office, all the gifts, everything you do is motivated by love. But we, we have got in the church today that, uh, uh, that, and the devil has polluted love to the point where you've got to put up with everything and allow everything, and, and, and that's, that's untrue. That's not true. I mean, I, guys, if I sit here and let a homosexual go to hell and may not tell that homosexual that he's in sin, I'm going to stand judgment for that. Second chapter of, of, of Ezekiel, you know, if you tell him the blood's not on you, if you don't tell him the blood's on you, that's one reason you, you'll find the prophetic office, how you'll, by reading that you'll understand why they're motivated so strongly. They understand, they understand what the, what, what's happening in, in the plans of God. And they know how serious everything is. So love can look a little bit differently than what the world, church world, is trying to present it. But everything you do has to be motivated by love. And I'm going to give you an example. Brother Norval, oh, everybody, oh, he was just as loving as he could be, and that was true. Until he spotted the devil. And he'd spring off of this, off of this stage, he'd run over there, and he'd tackle whoever it was. Come out in the name of Jesus. 
Now the world looked at that, that wasn't, look, wasn't looking too loving. But he'd get them free, set them up, back in the pew, go back up and start preaching again. He got them free. Now they can serve Jesus. So you got, you got to understand, you got to get the, what love is in perspective. Now another thing that you want to look for when you judge the gift of of prophecy. Let me, let me, so you'll understand the gift of prophecy, and I, I'm going to back up because I covered this the last time I taught, is what we call simple prophecy. It has no predictive value. If you want to, uh, to get a prediction, you need to go to a true prophet. And I'm going to tell you something don't ever walk up to a true prophet and say, Give me a word, because you're not going to like the word he gives you. See that, and that's happening today. I, I, I sit there and I watch, go to these meetings. I watch people. Give me a brother, brother. Give me a word. Give me a word. Uh, you don't want to do that. Hallelujah. But in the gift of simple prophecy, you have to look out for familiar spirits. Now, I'm going to give you an, uh, an example that Brother, Brother Hagen gave, that, and this, this will make it very simple for you to understand what a, 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 a familiar spirit is. He had a minister that was in a big meeting, a big move of God, a man that supposedly had the gift of prophecy or was a prophet, was operating supposedly very mightily. The, the pastor goes up, the man looks at him, and, and he starts prophesying over him and then says, you know, the Lord told me that in your chester drawers, in your house, under, under the second drawer down, under your underwire, is a two-carat diamond ring. And the Lord said, if you want me to, uh, him to really bless you, you need to sew that diamond ring into my ministry. Now, was that God or not? A week later, he sold that. Well, he sold that into that ministry, and a week later, he found out that that was not a real man of God. Come to Brother Hagen. He said, "What did I do wrong?" And he said, "You listened to a familiar spirit. Devils know what you're saying. They don't know what's in your mind. Okay? They can put thoughts in your mind, but they don't know what's in your mind. But once you say something or you act on it, devils can can act on it." And, and I've, got, I've got some people that I'm, I'm going to have to deal with that I'm, I told the staff, next time this person comes in, I'm going to deal with them, okay? That person hasn't been back, neither one of them, in months and months. Because, you see, that devil knows what's getting ready to happen. And he's not going to run the risk of me casting the devil out of that person. So he just won't let him come back. You got to realize, you know, people get scared of demons and all this stuff, but they're real and they know what's going on. Now, if you're if you've got a man that's an angel of light, and that's what that that minister was, he was an angel of light. He's yielded himself to evil spirits, and those spirits was telling him that diamond ring's in there. So you have to you have to be very aware of of the uh, spirits. When you get into a meeting, especially a meeting where they're advertising it, it's, it's the meeting of the prophets and stuff. You really got to be aware of what's going on and wh who's doing what and wh who they actually are. <coughs> because not every meeting that advertises that this is the school of the prophets is led by Jesus Christ. Okay? How do I do that? You ask the Lord to give you the gift of discerning the spirits. And, I, and, you, and, and let me say this. Let's say you say, well, I really don't think I've got that. You've got something even better than that gift. And that gift's powerful. You've got an inner man. If your inner man says, be wire, if there's a question that comes up in your spirit, you walk away from it as fast as you can. I don't care who it is because I can name big names that I warned my wife of years ago that are not serving the Lord today, but I, I saw thousands of people running to them. And they were, they were as fake as they could be. Guys, your inner man and the discerning spirits will guide you truly. 
So just ask the Lord to show you. And, and, and you walk in, and the guy starts giving a word or something. Lord, is this real? Just sit and wait. You'll get a check. And when you get that check, you don't have to get up and huff out and stomp your feet and dust your dust off your feet, but you sure don't have to do what, what that man tells him to do or follow his counsel, okay? But discerning the spirits plays in to all, anything that you do, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, because there's people going to walk up and say, Lord told me to tell you this, and Lord didn't even know, know what he's talking about. Had no idea. You know, well, the Lord knows everything, but I'm just saying it didn't have anything to do with the Lord, guys. But boy, it sounded good. It smelled good. My, my wife is easy. If you just look good, quote a few scriptures and say a few hallelujahs, jump up and spin around, you're, you're perfect. Now, I'm not saying that bad about Mabel. Some of y'all are that way. Okay, if it looks good and it smells good, it is good. No, it's not. Trust me, angel light can deceive you. You can be deceived, but you can't, your inner man can't be deceived. You, the person, can be. Ask your inner man to start showing you what's going on. And this is vital to judge what, what's taking place in the gifts or any, any, any church service. Okay, prophecy will I, okay, let me see. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Prophecy can and will operate when other prophets are there. Now what you're going to find out is if you've got two or three prophets in the room, the gift of prophecy will begin to operate because you're, you're in the presence of that office. And what you may find out is those prophets may not be the ones operating in it. They're setting the atmosphere for that room, okay? And, the, and that gift will begin to operate just because of the atmosphere created about the ministry gifts that are in that room. You'd be amazed at how, how uh, just walking in. Brother Littlefield would, would walk in to a hospital room and the entire atmosphere in that room would change just because he walked in the room. He would walk into this church during seminars and the atmosphere would change when he walked in the door. Uh, Brother Norwell told me uh, he was sitting on the platform one day and Brother Oral Roberts was out of the country supposedly or somewhere and uh, uh, wasn't going to be in the meetings and they're sitting on the, uh, on the platform and somebody's speaking and, and I forget who he said was sitting there. It might have been Richard. And they turned around and looked at me and said, uh, uh, if it was Richard, he said, uh, Dad is now on the property. Norval looked at how you know that. He said, because I, I, I recognize his spirit. And sure enough, in a, in a, a minute or two, uh, Oral walked through the door. Wasn't he supposed to be there? But you see, Richard or whoever, I don't think it was Richard. I think it might have been the, whoever was directing the ministry at that time, said Oral's on the property. You would be amazed at, at the presence of God. I've, had, I've, I've seen atmospheres change when I've walked into rooms and stuff. Not like Brother Littlefield, but, but, but I, I, I've seen it and I understand it. The presence of God, you're a carrier of His glory. And, and, and when you walk in, you will change the atmosphere. And so when the prophets, prophets walk in, you'll, you'll begin to see the gift of prophecy operating. Let me, let me give you the scripture on it. 1 Samuel 10, 9 and 10. And, and it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, he gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came hither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. See, the moment he came in contact with that ministry gift, he began to prophesy. Prophecy, prophecy will operate uh, when hands are laid on. Okay, you're working, you're working, uh, working the prayer line. And, and, and you lay your hands on somebody and all of a sudden uh, 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 the gift of prophecy will begin to operate just like the gifts of healing or the gifts of miracles. You say, and let me give you the scripture on that real quick. Acts uh, 19, 1. And it came to pass that Apollos and Corinth was at Corinth. Paul having passed through the upper coast came to the this, and I can't, and, and certain disciples and he said unto them have you received 
the Holy Ghost since ye believe. And he said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a, a Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And he said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized you with a baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ. When they heard it, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and did prophesy. So you see, he laid hands on them, and the gifts began to operate. And prophecy will come, may come as you listen to anointed music or preaching. Now, why am I telling you all this? Because you need to be ready. You see, you need to expect the gifts. You, you don't get things if you don't expect them from God. Okay? And here's what you need to understand about uh, when prophecy comes during, uh, at any time. Listen. Pay attention to what is being said. There is actually a message in that prophecy. Prophecy is not given for you to just stand up here and bubble up and feel good. There's information in, in, in prophecies. Prophecy can tell you what the devil is doing. You ever think about that? You see, we always think it's all about God, but you'd be amazed that how many times the devil will prophesy, and he'll tell he'll probably tell you things about his plan and stuff, but he'll also tell you what the devil's doing and how how to stop it. He'll tell you resist the devil. You know, you'd be amazed at the information that comes through prophecy if you really listen to it. Now, I wanna I wanna really on the teaching. On prophecy, I want to show you something, uh, and I've talked about and compared the, the gift of prophecy and the prophet, but let's, let's go to Acts 21, uh, verse 8 and 13. And the next day we, we that were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and, and abode with him. So now Philip, one, was an evangelist, he was a deacon. Now listen to what came next. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So there were, they were four, at least four people in the household that we know of that had the gift of prophecy. Okay? And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. Okay? And when he was come into us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What meant ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Now there's a lot happened right there that you need to understand. You had four people in the gift of prophecy that we know of, and God sends a prophet to Paul. Why? Why didn't God just move on one of those four girls? Now understand, I've, I've taught you that the gift of prophecy has no predictive value. Okay? There's something else you need to understand. Did you notice he bound his head, got his girdle, and put a show on? Well, that, that goes along with the office of a prophet. You know, there's, uh, I hate to say this, but there's, there's an account of one prophet running fairly naked through the city to get people's attention. Prophets will put a show on to get what they need to get across to you. They will do some weird, crazy things. Okay. But here's why the Holy Ghost sent a prophet. A prophet is the last warning before judgment comes. 
when the Holy Ghost, you quit listening to the Holy Ghost, when you quit listening to prophecy, when you quit listening to the Word, when you quit listening to everything, God sends a, sends a prophet. And when you reject Him, it's over with. If you receive Him, you're still in the ball game. And that's what happened there. Now, I also want you to understand this. Right there, it tells us that Paul already knew what his face, fate was going to be. And he had already decided whether they bind me up and throw me in jail or whether they kill me, I'm going to Jerusalem. That's why when it was over with, the prophet fellowshiped with him and he left. You see, the blood wasn't on him. He, he had given the word. Paul had made his decision. It was contrary to what the prophet said. But you see, it was Paul was doing in line with what God wanted. Not only was he going to Jerusalem, but he was going to Rome. But God gave Paul that decision to make. So the prophet wasn't wrong. He was doing exactly what the Lord told him to do. If you go, and, and I want to point out something. They did, they, the, the Romans and the Jews did everything that Agabus said. Do you realize, you know, we tell the story of Jonah. You know, they, and, and I've heard guys just butcher the story of Jonah. Well, Jonah got mad and he did this. He was mad because of this. He was mad because of that. You know why Jonah was really mad? Because he just walked in to a nation, prophesied under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and it didn't come to pass. Are you aware that by the law, Jonah was supposed to be killed? You notice they didn't kill Jonah. You know why? 300 years later, Nineveh had done just exactly what Jonah said they'd do. You see, those people repented. They turned the nation around because of what Jonah prophesied. But after Jonah, it was over with 300 years later, that Nineveh fell right back into the same trap with the devil and was destroyed exactly the way that Jonah said it would be. So you've got to understand, you've got to read the Word. You just don't read a passage and, and, and make, a, <coughs> make a doctrine out of it. You see, these guys, they walked. When God told them something, they looked God face to face, and He told them, this, this is what you're going to say. And if they didn't say it, say it under, under the law, they were to be stoned. And Jonah knew that. You know, he, he'd done exactly what the Lord told him, even though he, he ended up having to be eaten by a whale and everything else. But eventually he got around to doing what the Lord wanted him to do. And then when he done it, it didn't, it didn't come out the way he said it was going to come out. But you see, he, didn't, he didn't, couldn't see into the future 300 years later. Agabus, Agabus did everything that he's supposed to do and Paul made the right choice. He was given a choice. And I'm going to say this. If Paul had not went to Jerusalem, he, he, he would have probably died an old man still preaching the gospel and God would have been blessing him. But because he chose this different path, he affected another part of the world. You see, wrote the book of Romans and just all kinds of things. You see, but God gave him a choice. Here's, here's another thing to learn out of this passage. God will never make you do anything. Well, Brother Keith, I, I, I just turned from the Lord because I think the Lord called me to be in ministry and I just couldn't be in ministry. And I knew he was going to make me be in ministry. He's not going to make you do anything, guys. God don't make you do anything. Now, you'll hear people like me and, and Brother Dell get up and say, the Lord told me to do this, and I had to do it. He's not saying the Lord made him do it. He knew, just like Paul knew, Paul knew he had to go to Rome, to Jerusalem and on to Rome. <clears throat> You'll get into ministry, and you know the plan of God, and, and the Lord will say, do this. He's not making you do this. But you'll, you'll say, well, I had to do this, because that was just part of the plan. You, it was part of you. God doesn't make people do things. He's an honorable God. He wants you to follow Him. He wants you to be obedient to Him. And He gives you that ability. See, that's, that's a difference in the God we serve. 
He created man to be his friend, not, not to be a slave. So, and you've got to keep that in mind, who you are and what you are in, in Christ Jesus. Now, I want to, I'm going to teach, I've done taught what I'm about to teach, and it won't take long to do this, uh, uh, in my, my teachings on the government. And I, I went into the last night of that, I went into great detail on this, and I, but I'm going to share a little bit of it tonight, today, and then when I, when I teach on the uh, uh, tongues and interpretation of tongues, I'll get into it more. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, 22 through 23, or 33. And I want to say this, uh, the reason I'm teaching this is, is we've got the gifts operating more, and we have to have a system here to, to, to make sure that everything is done orderly, Okay. You just don't jump up and give a word when you want to give up. If you notice, Dale will start moving. Dale is trained well enough. If I shake my head, he'll go sit back down. And Dale won't get mad at me. Brother Hagen went into the Goodwin uh, church, family church. He said that was the greatest trained church in his, that he'd ever seen. He said they were trained to raise their hand. And he said, he said I, I went there just for decades. Uh, I don't know how many hundred meetings he did in that church. He said they'd raise their hand, and he just, he said he never, he never let anybody get up and operate in the gifts. Why, I don't know, but he just didn't do it. But they, none of them got mad at him, you know, none of them, you know. That's the speaker, whoever's in authority over that meeting, that he's, he's the one being led of the Lord, knows what he's going to come, the Lord's wanting him to accomplish. So if you raise your hand and I say no, or Dale or whoever, don't take offense to it. Okay, you know, he, and I'll say this, there could be a time I'm wrong about it, but it'll all be on me, it won't be on you, okay? So don't, don't ever, don't ever uh, get offended if, if they don't let you operate in the gifts. But let's look here, Where, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. So we'll, we'll learn a lot about tongues next week, but those are for the non-believing. Tongues are for the non-believing people. But here's what I want you to see. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them that which believe. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and I'll speak with tongues, and there comes in those that are unlearned or unbelieving, will they not say that ye are mad? Now think about it. If everybody jumps up and and there's an unbeliever in here, he's just going, man, those people are crazy. And he's not getting anything out of it. <coughs> when he walks out, he don't know a thing. Okay? But now let's look here. <coughs> and remember that because that will play into something else in a minute. But if I'll prophesy then there comes in one that believes not or unlearned. He is convinced of all. He is judged of all. What is, what's he saying there? That man walks or woman walks in. They're non-believing. But everybody gets up and starts prophesying. He's actually hearing what's being prophesied. Remember, what's being prophesied comes from the throne of grace. He can learn from it. He can pick up on it. He can get saved in that meeting because of the power of God that's flowing. So if you're going to, if you're going to have everybody doing something at one time, you're better off that it be prophecy than tongues. Okay? But he goes on to give some more uh, guidelines. And no, the, the regular church is not going by all this. And, and, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in a truth, in you of a truth. You see, what it's saying there is uh, during that time, somebody might be reading that man's mail. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you have a psalm? Have a doctrine, have a tongue. Now right there tells you tongues are in existence. And have a revelation, have an interpretation, let all things be done unto edifying. So the, these gifts have to do with edifying the body of Christ. If a man speaks in an unknown tongue, 
let it be by two or, now pay attention, at most three. And that by course, let one interpret. Okay, if Tim jumps up, gives a prophecy in tongues, I'd push on the land of my, 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 and he stops. Okay, is he in order? Yes, he is. That's one. Mabel jumps up and interprets it. She in order? Yep, said led by one person. Tim sets down, Mabel sets down. All of a sudden, uh, uh, Dale jumps up and he gives a tongue. Who's supposed to interpret that tongue? Mabel. I'm just reading what the Bible says, guys, because here's the thing about it. Every one of you been in meetings that that wasn't the way it happened. And you've seen it here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. The closer you get to doing the Word of God, the greater the glory comes in. That's a promise. Mabel jumps up and she gives that word. Then all of a sudden, Emily jumps up and she gives her tongues. Who interprets it? Mabel. Now, some might say that should be it. It says three. I don't know. Dale might have more wisdom on this than me. Can they keep giving more prophecies? I, I would say if the Spirit moves, you do it. But ag technically, three prophecies should be all that's given in one meeting based on that. Okay. Much different than what, what most people are doing. Now let me, uh, let me say this. Remember, because I taught this last time, tongues and interpretation of tongues equals simple prophecy. Now if you don't have any lost in here, tongues shouldn't be given interpretation. It should be prophecies. If you'll notice, uh, and I pay attention, guys. Dale gets up and he comes up here. Every time he's come up here, I don't think they've been a lost person in, the, in a room anywhere. See, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows what he's doing, guys. Now, let me ask you this. I'll be mean. Could Dale get up and give his prophecy and then interpret it? And I know y'all seen people do that. By that scripture, no. Now, I'm not going to deny that if, and I don't know if Dale's even got these giftings operate. I don't have the tongues of interpretation operating in me as of yet. But if, uh, he, if he's got the gift of interpretation also, he can interpret what he, what he prophesied. Not, I'm not arguing that you couldn't do it. If you've got those giftings, you can do it. But, but here's, here's why this says this. It would have more punch to a non-believer to see two people operating in that than one. Because they could always say, he just made all that up, you see. But if two people operate in it, it gives it more of a punch. So in a perfect world, we would be better off to do exactly what the Scripture says. In a non-perfect world, you see people that, that will interpret their own, their own tongues, okay? And I do want, to, want y'all to understand something, and this is why I'm praying, especially I, for interpretation, is that... Is that that one person, if Mabel is given the interpretation, that does not mean they might be 10 people in this room that are hearing that same interpretation and could give it, okay? So, so you have to be aware of that. Well, Brother Keith, you didn't let me, you didn't give me the mic or whatever. Well, I'm being nice because you weren't in order. You're having to learn. Now, all these other things I've taught tell me, see, I, I don't hear the interpretation, so I have to rely on all these things I've taught you. That's how I know whether you're in order or not. That's one reason I'm asking the Lord to give me the inter interpret, ability to interpret, because it's easier. Because i got to stand here and, and evaluate everything that's going on to, to know whether you're in order or not. And I want the easy way out, okay? 
So, uh, and I don't mind telling you that. It is easier. It's just like the discerning the spirits, guys. You don't realize how much easier that gift uh, 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 gives me as a pastor. I mean, I'm sitting here and a guy walks through the door never seen before and all of a sudden, be wire, be wire, be wire, be wire. I never met him, I never talked to him, but I already know there's a problem there, okay? I know when some of y'all walk in, down, 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 problems, problems, because of discerning spirits. The gifts make it a lot easier for you. In ministry, it, get, it, it will make it a lot easier for you in your everyday life. <clears throat> let the prophets, okay, let me, uh, uh, verse 28. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. All right. And, and this is happening here. We've got several people that operate in tongues and uh, they do kind of look at who's here to make sure that there's somebody that, that interprets, okay? And you, in, in a regular body, you will find out over a period of time who will interpret it. Okay, Mabel's not in here, so Mabel's, Mabel's not here to interpret. We know Karen interprets. Who else in here? Do you, Dale, do you interpret? Dale interprets, so a tongue could be given in here. But you see, you need to know who interprets. Because if God moves on you to give a tongue and they're not in here, you might not want to say anything. Okay? So you see, you have to learn to be led by the Holy Spirit and everything. Okay, 29. Let the prophet speak two or three and let the others judge. Now, man, I'm going to get, are they going to be people get mad at me? You ever been in a prophet's meeting? All you prophets come up, 200 of them come up there. Now, guys, let's prophesy. They just violated the Word of God. Because it says by two or three. It don't matter if you're in a church of 10,000 people, 100,000 people. It says to let them prophesy by two or three. At the most. Y'all all been in meetings where they do it. They're giving words out so fast. And the best way to figure out if they're, if they're really who they say they are, get up there and be nosy. Walk up there in front and listen to them. Listen to how many of them use the name of Jesus. I can tell you this, guys, the real prophets, that name will be coming off their tongue as fast as they can say it. You don't separate them from Jesus. and they, 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 They're not going to let that happen. The real prophets. But you see, you already got an indicator because they've already violated uh, 1 Corinthians because it says by two or three and let the others judge. You even judge whether the prophets know what they're saying or not. And if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. Why would that be in there? <clears throat> You're dealing with prophets. Why would a prophet hold his peace? I've been in this situation several times. Ministers will get up and they'll, they'll give a hard word. People will attack them. That person doesn't know what they're talking about. Well, most of the time, Dale, it's evangelists, the people I've been with. And man, they just start giving down the road. Now, it's different when an evangelist says something and a prophet walks up to you. Because I can tell you this, I will come towards you with a whole different attitude than what, what Dale with is an evangelist. I'm going to tell you, you need to shut up and sit down because that man knows exactly what he's saying because it comes from the throne of grace. See, difference in person. Now, that forehead of Flint Norval said, I had, trust me, my head is hard. And when I hear something, I'm going to, I'm going to confront. But here's what I'll do. I, as, as the Lord moves on the ministers, I just sit there and keep myself quiet. If nothing said, everybody receives it, I'd never say a word. But if you start attacking what is being preached at the Word of God, then the Lord will activate me and I will confront it, you see. But in another way you can teach this, especially if, it's, if there's older prophets in the room, they will have a tendency to allow the youngers to speak and they'll judge it for training purposes. 
you say. So it's important that you realize that, that and, and this is being lost in the church, guys. They don't under, people don't know. I've had people walk up to me or tell Mabel, why well, he don't know a thing about me. I could write a book. These people are not here now. I'm not talking about you guys. I don't want you to get nervous. But I could write a book about these people and where they're at and what they're doing and what they're not doing. And Mabel's sitting there with her mouth wide open. Well, they said, yeah, let's, let's talk about what I do know about them. I don't want to hear all this, Keith. You, you will be amazed as the gifts operate in you. And no, I'm not talking about mind reading, guys. Okay, I'm not talking about you don't read people's minds. But I'm talking about you, you will be amazed that what you know about the corporate body when you're operating in the corporate body under the anointing. The Holy Ghost will show you stuff. He may say, come up here, tell me, bring uh, uh, Cecil up here. And I, I won't know a thing about what's happened to Cecil, but I know I've got to bring her up here. And then all of a sudden he'll say, uh, he'll tell me depression or something, and I'll, I'll start going down. She'll say, how do you know all that? It's being led by the Spirit. The gifts, of operation, the gifts are operating in us. So, so don't be, understand that when all these things do happen, they are more than one person in that room that knows what's going on and can, can confirm uh, what the Lord is doing. For if you, if you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And as in all churches of the saints. Now let me, verse 32, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Prophets can turn, turn on and turn off. Okay? And I've said this before. The gift of prophecy, you don't turn it on, turn it off. It is as by the Spirit utters. If you don't give it, you lose it. You have, you, it doesn't have to be given that very second that you get it because you don't want to disrupt the flow of the meeting. But there is a time frame that these gifts will operate in the corporate body and, and you can, you've got some leeway. But if, that, if this meeting stops and, and you leave and, and you don't see me for six months, oh yeah, about six months ago, the Lord gave me a word of prophecy for you. Don't waste your time giving it. It, 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 it will not accomplish what it was sent out to do. God, God gives the, thing, the prophet words of prophecy for right then. Tongues and interpretation for right then because it's going to affect the body and what's going on that very second in that body. But you don't have to be so fired, and, and most of us are this fired up. Oh, I got to give it, I got to give it. You can always wait until whoever's speaking has a break, says, now come here. <coughs> but don't, don't go out the door. Don't carry it out the door. You got to, it's one of these things, you got to unload it when you get it, okay? Now, if you don't get the opportunity and you, it was a word for Dale, you might give it to him after the meeting's over standing, standing at the back of the church or someplace like that. I'm not saying that. But don't, don't think you're going to carry this stuff for years. Why? Because most people are trying to tell you, well, I'm a prophet because I do that. No. What you've got, there's no predictive value. It is, it is only good when the Holy Ghost tells you to, to give it. And when, it, when he tells you to give it, it has a force and a power that will change whoever it's meant for his life. But if you carry it on out, it loses that. You say, prophet? Nah. He can carry it and carry it and carry it. And one day the Lord will say, give it now. And away it'll go. And, and you, you might, might find he may give that word more than once. And there's always a power to it. You see, you getting anything out of this? So we look, at, we look at all these things. I'll give you enough if you'll go back and study it. You can rightly decide whether a person is operating in the gift of, of, of prophecy. You can, you can at least somewhat, and I'm debating whether to teach on the office of a prophet, because I actually need to show you just how, how drastically different the prophetic office is than the gift of prophecy, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. 
I mean, uh, you've got to realize I, I, I operate in, in the nine gifts of spirit. I operate in the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. I operate in prophecy. But you'll, you will find I don't do that very often. But I give words all the time to people. I give words I don't even know I'm giving words. You know. I just say what the Lord tells me to say. And man, you changed my life. You've changed my life. And, you know, I'd like to. But I, I don't even know what to say. I have to ask for what to say. Well, you said this and this. Yeah, I was wondering why I said that. You know. But they're so different. They're so different. But here's the thing about it is the, 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 the gift of prophecy is here to comfort, to edify, and to exhort the body of Christ. It can, it can operate in you continuously. And, and let me say this. It does not have to operate in a church, just in a church service. You can be sitting out on, in a, on a beach on your front porch or wherever, and that gift begin to operate in you, okay? But, but understand it's a gift that, you, that when it comes, there's going to be somebody sitting there that needs to hear it. And I, I'm going to say this, and I, I bet Dale's had this to happen to him. I have, you know who I've prophesied the most to? Take a guess. Myself. Man, I, I tell you what, uh, and, and most of y'all by now figured out I'm a Bible teacher, but I come under anointing. I'm one of the greatest preachers you've ever heard if you're in the car with me when it comes on me. I just wish I had a microphone and I could prove how great a preacher I am. I couldn't preach one word if I wanted to, if the Holy Ghost don't come on me. Same way with prophecy. It'll come on you. I prophesied. I'm saying, oh, my goodness. I prophesied Bible verses when I started in this that I'd never read before and, and, and would eventually come across them in the Old Testament. Where would that come from? To the Holy Spirit. So, you want me to tell you something? Practice prophecy. How do you pray? Now, remember, the Holy Ghost has to come on you. But just say, Lord, teach me how to, how to operate in this gift. You lay it in your bed, it comes on you, start, start prophesying. Learn how, learn how to do it. Angus Buck in one, preaches to hundreds of thousands of people in one service now. You know where he started out at? In the bed of his pickup truck in a cornfield preaching to corn. He trained himself. He yielded. He learned to yield to the Holy Ghost. And I bet you if he's here, I bet you a hundred dollar bill, he prophesied to that corn occasionally. But he'll tell you most of, most of that word was for him instead of the corn. Move in it. Ask the Lord. Start asking the Lord. Get, let me operate in the gifts of the Spirit. It will change your life. But it will also make your life and walk as a Christian much better. You will not have to guess at who I need to be around, around or who I don't need to be around. You'll be amazed. You'll be sitting there th watching NCIS or thinking about NCIS and somebody walks in and all of a sudden, be wire, be wire, be wire, be wire. Discern the spirits is operating. Why? Because, because you're a child of God. Once he begins to operate in these gifts with you, as long as, as, long as you keep your face towards him, those gifts are going to always operate in you. Sometimes they'll operate more than other days because it is by the unction of the Holy Spirit, but the gifts are there. And just like what I've said, I don't do tongues and interpretation. That, I say that because that's the truth, okay? I've never operated in that gift. I mean, I can get up here and pray in tongues uh, 10, 15, 20 hours, okay? But I'm not saying that I, that I can't operate in them or I won't operate in them. I'm just telling you the fact that's two gifts of, of, of the nine I've not operated in. And I've told the Lord, I said, I need, I need the uh, gift of, uh, of interpretation. And I suspect that once I get the gift of the interpretation, since I've done got tongues operating in me, I, I, I will probably give tongues in it uh, when it happens. But, it, but there's nothing next week. Yeah, next week I'm going to show you, you have a right to covet the gifts. You have a right to desire the gifts. You've got a right to ask God for the gifts. And you need to be doing that and, and, and allowing yourself to move. And that's why uh, 16th of uh, February we're going to do a believers meeting. Dale's going to preach. And if the gifts operate, they're going to uh, raise your hand up. Dale will recognize you. I'll recognize you. Whoever's, whoever's uh, leading the meeting at, at that particular moment, 
they'll recognize you. Well, what if I'm wrong? Let me tell you something. You probably will be wrong from time to time. You know, I'm going to tell you right now, I am so glad. I, I've been uh, walked in the prophetic office since 1969. And listen to me, I am so glad that they do not stone prophets today because I would probably be dead <laughs> because I have screwed up more than once. Okay? But you see, I've, I've kept moving. I've kept moving towards you. You see, and that's the way you've got to be towards your gifts. You know, not everything that was prophesied here in the um, uh, healings and miracles came through the gift. Some of it came from within inside. Nobody got on to anybody. But you could tell. You could tell what was real and what wasn't real. Now, here's the thing about it is I already know the Holy Ghost is done talking to one of them, saying, you know, this, this, and this. And eventually, they'll get, they'll, they, that gift will operate in them. Why? Because they have a desire to operate in it. God's not going to give you something if you don't desire it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody else in here that needs prayer? I'm trying to get back to getting you out here at 1230. It's hard. Hallelujah. You need prayer? Come on up here. Uh, remember the Johnsons and Madeline. Keep praying for, for her um, and all those that we've been praying for. But I'm going to uh, pray for, for these two, and then we'll turn. Let's go ahead and sit right here. What, can I, what do you need? Okay. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to these intestinal issues right now. I curse whatever's taking place in her body. I command it to die and leave her body by the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, I declare her healed. In the name of Jesus, I command all poison to leave her body right now. By the stripes of Jesus, she's healed. I thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. Okay. Okay, let me lay you, lay you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil over my sister right now. I speak to her head and her back, her vertebrae. In the name of Jesus, I lay my hand on her back right now. In the name of Jesus, I command everything to come back in line with the way you created it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the devourer. I command, I command her back to line up with the spoken word. By the stripes of Jesus, she's healed right now. No more, no more headaches in the name of Jesus. No more pain in the name of Jesus. I command all the vertebrae, all the nerve endings to line up in the name of Jesus. I break any spirits that are trying to steal her peace right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that she's at peace in the name of Jesus. She's healed in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, I declare her healed. I speak to that back right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You battled with depression? Um, I have in the past, yes. Okay, let me pray for you. Mm -hmm. Father, I break the spirit of depression over my sister right now. I break the spirit of depression. I command it to go in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all names, and by the stripes of Jesus, she's healed. You foul demonic presence, I command you to go. You'll not steal, kill, or destroy. You'll not fire those oppressive thoughts to her anymore. She's at rest. She's at peace in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, she's healed. Hallelujah. 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 See, that was a word of knowledge right there. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody else good? Hallelujah. 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 You need prayer? Okay. I just saw you standing. Hallelujah. Be praying for the ministry. There's a lot of good things. Uh, everything is turning. You know, I, I kept telling you, the Lord told me that things would change in January. And I see the change, guys. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of good stuff going on. We still got a lot of things we need to do, <laughs> but we're getting where, where the Lord wants us. Be praying for this ministry. This year, we're going to have a spiritual impact on the world. 
It's just that simple. Well, Brother Keith, how are you going to do it? It's already happening. I mean, there, there's people all over the world watching us right now. By, by the end of the day, I'll hear from different countries right now. And there's something going on. I, I know something's going on that I don't know about. It sounds crazy, but, but I can see it. There's indicators online that tell me this thing's going out more. And then the Lord prophesied over Mabel and I that we, that, that we have sown seed all over the world and that we're about to reap the harvest of that seed. Hey, guys, we've not left, left the inside of this sanctuary. You got to listen to what's prophesied to you. You don't understand. You're not limited by your physical surroundings in this fleshly body. When you start speaking, and, and Dale will tell you, he, he goes and he ministers, and, and this stuff goes out online, you, you don't know where it's going and who it's affecting. You have no idea what's taking place. So, so let's keep praying for the ministry because we are affecting the world. We'll be back here Wednesday night, and if the Lord allows me, I'm going to start a series on angels. Uh, many, no, I won't say many years ago, but five, six years ago, the Lord began to talk to me that the church needs to understand angels before this revival or this outpouring hits big because angels are going to have a very big job in what's about to happen on this earth. They always have had but we're really going to see them operate on behalf of the church in the next few years. So I'm going to teach on that. And uh, uh, I'm going from the origin of how Lucifer, Lucifer became Satan all the way through the Bible. I think 10 sessions at least to teach it all. So it's, that's going to be an important teaching. We'll start that Wednesday night if the Lord allows me to. Uh, Thursday at 10 o'clock we will be in here for intercession and then Friday at 6 o'clock will be the Rugrat uh, worship service and guys be praying with that I mean we've uh, the light, we've had four uh, children's meetings and had 29 saved uh, that's a pretty good record and I'd like to see some more get saved uh, this Friday night and uh, y'all can come out to it too we got plenty of room might even give you a piece of pizza so uh, everybody good father I call everyone under the sound of my voice online and here in the building blessed father I thank you that the angels have charge over them to keep them safe they are free from any demonic uh, oppression anything the devil is trying to do to steal kill and destroy I bind it up I command it to cease in its operation maneuvers against them they are free they're at peace Father, I thank you that, they are, they, that revelation knowledge is flowing to them because they are studying the Word and they are walking, walking the floor quoting Scripture, Lord, over themselves and they are communing with you. And I call them blessed right now in the name of Jesus and I thank you for all that you've done here tonight. And thank you, Lord, for healing everyone and especially being with the Johnson family and, and Madeline by the stripes of Jesus, she is healed. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Yep, i got to keep my for prayer and uh, worship. Hallelujah.